for helping put your family on the road to success this morning. That new school year means stocking up on school supplies, right? Even once your child has started back, you may find yourself running back to the store to get extra things they need. Sometimes you miss some of those essentials. So what's the best way to navigate all of this on a budget? Nick Wolney, the senior editor for CNET Money, is joining us to break down what you need to know. Nick, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So what kind of habits are you noticing with shoppers? How are they attempting to save this school year? Well, one of the things that is coming up is that shoppers are putting more things on a credit card uh, for this particular school year. The average household is expecting to spend about $900 on back to school supplies. Uh, it's quite a lot. And so many people are financing that as a result. Um, some new reporting from CNET Money found that 43% of consumers are going to put that on a credit card or some other form of financing in order to do that. So as you're shopping, particularly for something like electronics, you might want to look for things like refurbished electronics, certified refurbished electronics, anything like that, that can help you save a few bucks, particularly if you find that after the school year has started, there's a bunch more supplies that you got to run back out and get so that your child is set up for the school year ahead. And Nick, some people are still choosing to shop online. Is there different advice for online versus in-store shopping? <laughs> One of the things that you can use if you are shopping online is look into getting a free shopping extension for your browser. These are free extensions. You download them, you install them on your browser. And then what happens is while you're shopping for a product online, if that same product is available for a lower price on another retailer's website, uh, say you're on Amazon and you're looking at a backpack and that same backpack is five or 10 bucks cheaper on Walmart or on Best Buy or you know on another website, then you're gonna get a notification in real time on your browser that that same product is less expensive somewhere else. We know that more back to school shoppers are shopping online and getting stocked up for the year online. So if that's you and you plan to buy a lot of items, look at installing one of these shopping extensions. That way you can be set up for success. And the whole buy now, pay later, that has become really popular. What are some ways to kind of safely navigate some of those options? The important thing to remember with buy now, pay later is that you actually pay down the debt quickly. You want to make sure that you're paying things down quickly. What we know from Federal Reserve hikes throughout the last 18 months is that as a result, credit card APRs are at a record high. Basically, it's more expensive to carry debt or to delay payments than it was even a year or two ago. Uh, and so what we want you to be really aware of is paying down any of those debts quickly. If you are going to finance a purchase, make a plan for how you're going to pay down that purchase, how long it's going to take you to pay it down. Particularly with back to school, this is kind of a, a tricky time because it's right before holiday. And so if you end up overspending and you're carrying a balance for a few months, you're still going to have a balance going into the holiday shopping season, which for most families is the, the biggest and most expensive shopping season of the year. So we want to ensure that you've paid down that debt quickly, have a plan for how you're going to pay, pay that down, and then you can go from there. Absolutely. And then when it comes to these specific supplies, what can people expect? What might cost people more this go around compared to last school year? We're seeing a rise in one-time use supplies and particularly paper supplies. Uh, so if you are needing to stock up on a lot of notebooks, a lot of index cards, one-time use items, things like that, then that's something important you'll want to perhaps look at some other solution for. Maybe it's time to get an iPad or to get a tablet or get something electronic that will allow you to take notes so that you're not burning down through all of that paper so quickly. Um, so pens and pencils, things like that, smaller items, we saw some double digit gains uh, in terms of pricing on those. Um, all in all, not too much more than last year, but in the last five years, it has gotten more expensive uh, for back to school shopping. So anything that consumers can do to save a few bucks is gonna be really welcome. All right, and so for the families who are still kind of coming up with the game plan before they begin their shopping, what's the best way to strategize in maximizing the savings? I think it can be really tempting with all the back to school sales to uh, to just go in and see what's available. Uh, make a plan not only for how much you're going to spend, but what you actually need. Also, if you plan on picking up something for yourself while you're out, this would be, a, I mean, it'd be a great time to do it. You know, you're going to be out and about. Everyone's getting ready to get back uh, to the school year. But I want you to really think about what you need. Uh, the overspending ends up being the biggest culprit, even more than, you know, something that can be offset by these small discounts here and there. 
there. If you go out, you know, for me, it's Target. I walk into Target to get a <laughs> toothbrush and then I come out and I've spent $250 and I have no idea what happened. Uh, so by just being a little bit more intentional with what you're going to actually purchase, then that will actually be one of the best personal finance strategies for you for this back to school shopping season. Absolutely. I think we all fall victim to the overspending, especially in Target. I do the same thing. <laughs> Nick Wolney, Absolutely. thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Mary. Ah, yeah, such good information. Hey, and we know those school supplies are expensive, and it is why WBTV has teamed up with Piedmont and Credit uh, Advantage Credit Union. This is the last day that you can nominate a teacher to win a $1,000 shopping spree. They use so much of their own money to get supplies. We want to help uh, make one teacher's life a little bit easier by getting the shopping spree in their hands. Alex and I get to go shopping with the winner, so we are excited about this. Go ahead, scan that QR code, submit that nomination again by today. Uh, and we can't wait to see them all and hear about all these amazing teachers. I, I just know we've got so many in our area. Yes, they are so deserving. And I how know. fun that you'll get to go out with them. I know. I was going to say, it, that is such a good interview. We just got all of the school supplies okay. in the mail yesterday because I'd been working to look through, you know, school supplies. It was wild because what he was saying on the desktop mm -hmm. where you can price compare, I, right. I did it on my phone, so I didn't have the desktop add-on. Okay. Um, but I loaded a cart in, like, on Amazon and Walmart and all the different sites, and it is wild how different the prices for some of these items can be. Interesting. If I had shopped just at one place, yeah. I would have spent about 100 bucks for all the required supplies, and instead shopping at multiple, it was like $55. Wow. How much of a difference? I mean, the online has changed the game, because I think back to when I would shop for back to school, and it was just like you'd go to Office Depot, and you'd run you around just, and get right, everything. Right, which is fun, too. Right. I kind of missed it that. It was fun, but you it's weren't comparing just, prices. You weren't comparing prices, and so hopefully that will help people save. But yeah, definitely. Do, it's a little extra work, but I think it's worth it. Absolutely.